Thank you. Um, and let me say that this is, has been a very informative meeting. So let me thank our guests for their very uh, comprehensive and competent uh, explanations. And uh, by the way, also congratulate them for um, their contribution for this uh, successful negotiation. Um, well, the um, AFCO committee is going to develop uh, two separate uh, exercises. In one hand, our input for the consent of the parliament and the uh, accompanying resolution, um, which is of course linked with this uh, agreement on the future relationship. And then a different exercise, which will be a report of AFCO, where I am the rapporteur, for the uh, implementation of the withdrawal agreement. So these will be two uh, separate exercises. Um, I very much welcome the um, explanations given on the um, implementation of the withdrawal agreement and the decisions of the joint uh, committee. Um, uh, nevertheless, I have some questions. Um, the first one has to do with the right of the European Union to be present at the border. If I understood correctly, we have now only two uh, elements in uh, at the border. I don't know exactly where. Uh, can you tell us where are they based? If uh, that is enough, if, and if you expect that in the near future, a stronger uh, European team will be there to exercise our um, uh, responsibilities in terms of controlling what's, what happens there at the border and the application of the uh, EU rules. Then we will have, of course, to assess uh, the definitions of these goods not at risk uh, of entering the EU market. My general question will be, uh, do you believe that the principles of the integrity of the single market and the principle of the whole uh, island economy are uh, sufficiently safeguarded uh, through these solutions? Then on the uh, agreement for the future relationship, the main concerns of our committee are, of course, citizens' rights, enforcement uh, mechanisms and uh, uh, governance. On citizens' rights, most of the issues were dealt uh, with uh, um, in the withdrawal agreement. By the way, I have a question there on the physical documents for citizens proving the rights of residents. Do you have any uh, information, any development on, on that? As for the rest, we welcome the uh, fact that there is no um, uh, visa discrimination. This was uh, prohibited by the agreement, and we also welcome the social security coordination. My question here is, um, do you see room for bilateral agreements between member states and the UK on uh, the UK citizens' uh, rights, those living in the, in the EU, so that they can get reciprocity from the UK? How do you see these possible bilateral uh, negotiations? And then on the enforcement mechanisms, uh, I very much welcome the link uh, between the um, cross suspension mechanism and the uh, implementation of the withdrawal agreement. And in general, I welcome the sanctions approach. And my question is, uh, is there any reason for uh, this sanction approach in terms of uh, ensuring respect for um, environmental, social and lender status not to become a normal standard for future trade agreements? Because if we need this sanctions approach to ensure these clauses here, I wonder why we would not uh, apply the same uh, standard to other trade agreements. Um, I have one question there. Um, is there any chance of applying unilateral measures um, in exceptional circumstances, of course, even um, before any decision of the arbitration panel? Or uh, those kind of measures can only be uh, adopted uh, and activated after uh, a decision of the arbitration panel. Um, and uh, um, a general issue here um, on the rule of, par rule of parliament, because the trade sanctions might imply uh, what I would call a dynamic agreement. So now we have zero, 
zero tariffs and zero quotas, in case of future transactions, we might change that and uh, introduce uh, tariffs and quotas. Uh, my question is, in that case, what will be the role of the Parliament for those changes through sanctions um, to the uh, fundamental balance of the agreement? Uh, on governance, my question is, who will nominate the arbitration panel and is there any room for the European Parliament on that? And when do you think the uh, Partnership Council will be uh, operational? So those would be my questions and again, I very much thank all the explanations given.